All right, so we were playing with atmosphere, and I showed how you can add atmosphere, you know, very directly by adding this kind of blue belch. And then, of course, with any element, you can play with its layer style. You can play with its opacity. And I think I will just, just use it on normal mode, but keep it really low opacity. But then you also want to really question your different texture overlays and if they actually help your creature stand out or not. Like this is a good instance where I'm going to dim this one a lot because I kind of like the, the shell getting a lot more light. Might dim this one a little bit more. But what's great is all of these are, are assets that we can turn off or on whenever we want, right? And it's all built into the file. Okay, so if I'm happy with that, this is how we get the things we need to submit. The first thing I do is I save it as a Photoshop file. So just save. There we go. Now I want to save it as a JPEG, right? So save as, same name, but change it to a JPEG file format because like our landscape, this fills with pixels, the entire uh, pixel grid. We want to be able to control to the desktop, Command D to navigate there. We want to control how large the file is before we put it online on the photo bucket. So at 12, it's probably going to be bigger than 5 megabytes. It's 14. So I'm going to put it all the way down to 8. You can try 9. And 9 will be good. So you, you want it smaller than 5 megabytes whenever possible, whenever we're doing a JPEG, putting it up to photo bucket. Now for the texture overlay, I am going to turn off my layers. all except for my texture overlay layers, which I'll mark yellow. All right. And then I'm going to set them to normal mode so we can see what you actually did with them. And then you will turn on the layers behind your last one. And if you have it at a really low opacity, like I have mine at 42, I'm going to go ahead and turn it up to 100. Right. This is the, the other thing you're going to turn in along with your your finished composite. So I want to see your overlay. And that shows me all the things you did to the landscape and or to your creature to help it blend in. And it's up to you if you want to put your creature in there or not. Right. Sometimes it can help. Mine's a pretty basic, this isn't a very complex text or sophisticated tech, uh, gradient overlay, but it, it shows you the skills. And so then you're going to say file, save as, and you're going to rename this assignment three gradient overlay. And you'll see how it actually helps when you, when you put it in a process portfolio. And we're not going to save it as a PSD, we're going to save it as a JPEG to the desktop with that same quality, keeping it at fewer than five megabytes. And this will be quite a bit fewer than five megabytes because JPEGs reduce based on a pattern recognition algorithm. And there's a whole lot of middle gray that it can recognize as a pattern. So whereas my first one at this exact same size, exact same quality was four megabytes, this one is only 1.2. Okay, then I can go back in my history to before I did all of that. It will usually show me in my history when I last saved it. Huh. That's 
pictures. <laughs> there we go. And that's where you want to, you know, kind of keep your file so you can return to it. Now, this is where I'm going to show you something a little crazy. I'll just make sure that I've saved my Photoshop file. It was already saved. I could have not saved this and it was good, right? But these are the things you're going to submit to PhotoBucket. Your texture over, your gradient overlay rather, and your JPEG of your composition. So I'll open them up in preview just so you can see. The gradient overlay should be number one. The finished creature scape should be number two. And by seeing them side by side, we will know where to look for the alterations you made to your landscape. We'll know to look where you put shadows, where you put lights, where you added uh, atmosphere. Come on. Stay with me. Okay, the crazy thing I'm going to do is a photography trick. And it's uh, using what are called actions to run a bunch of filters and autocorrect things to my image before I turn it in. So this is what the gradient overlay can look like. It will show the changes you made to your creature and the changes you made to the desktop or the background. And when you toggle between them, you'll see how that paints a picture of how you've nested your creature into your landscape. So those are what you'll submit to PhotoBucket for assignment three. This is an extra because we're combining assignments one and two together into assignment three. This is a chance to do kind of a finishing technique. This is usually only something you do before you came up with your, your print ready version. So what I'm going to do is go to my very top layer and I'm just going to say layer flatten image. Discard all the hidden layers. We've made a strong decision here. So I've moved everything into one layer. And the only reason I've done that is so I can run an action on it. So if you go up to a window actions, it will open it up, but it's also the little play button like on a VCR or a DVD player or a Blu-ray. And what you're looking for is a folder of actions that's called Carl's Customized Effects. Okay, so these are all actions I've, I've put into your computers. We have them in the class Dropbox. If they're not in your computers because we've uh, updated the operating systems on lots of them, then I can show you how to get them. But then I want you to find the action that says full run up. Now in order for this to work, and we can use this later on posters and things, um, you can only have one file open in Photoshop and it should be flattened. Okay, so I'm going to click on the full run up and then I'm going to hit play. Just like selecting a, a DVD from the shelf and then hitting play. But these are more like VHS tapes than like DVDs because if you actually open them up, you'll see all of the programmed actions in there. That's like pulling the magnetic tape out of a VHS cassette. You don't want to do that. So you only ever want to pick one and then run it. All of my actions in my folders are non-destructive, which means they'll always make a copy of the file and run the, the different tools on top of them. So that F9 full run up, it does all of my favorite, like most commonly used actions. And then it says F9 to view. So what you do is you go to window, you say arrange, I'm sorry, you say, um, yeah, you say arrange, and then you say float all in windows. And that will separate all of these different options out. Think of them as Instagram filters, basically, but they're ones that, that you can create for yourself. And then you hit F9, and you'll see them all on your screen. Okay, so this is my original, right? So some of them, obviously, <laughs> take out all the color. Some of them saturate the color. Some of them make them more sepia. Some of them, I like these. These look like kind of old postcards. Some of them cross process. And what I want you to do, if you were to use these actions, this is how I recommend you use them. Pull a few that you think have something that's interesting and then minimize them. So you can hit F9, minimize the few that you think have something interesting. 
really just a handful of them. Uh, I kind of like this one. Can't decide between these two, so I'll do this one. Minimize it. And then maybe a sci-fi one, like this cross-processing one. And then I got to say, I kind of really like the uh, black and white. It's nice and crisp. That's why it's called crisp black and white. And now all the others, except for my original, which is here somewhere. There it is. I am going to close and not save. So this is basically taking your finished design and pushing and pulling it in all these extreme directions. But maybe, oh, that one's kind of nice. <laughs> maybe, just maybe, there'll be something that makes it stronger. And that one's pretty interesting. All right. So now I'm going to put my original back in and I have all of these. I, I chose five different ones. That's a little too many. But first of all, let's take the black and white. This will make it really simple. I can flatten that option if it's not flattened because some of them are built with multiple layers that you can alter. And once it's flattened, you just select all, uh, command C to copy it, close it, don't save it, paste it on top of your original. Again, this is something we do to make something print ready. And then what I can do is I can use my opacity to blend it in. Next, that's a little different than just desaturating. Okay, this one is max texture. I'm going to use that at the end. This one is cross-processing, so crazy color. Notice how it's made of a few different layers that I can alter, but right now I just want to flatten it. This is my favorite way to use my actions. Select all, copy, delete, don't save, paste it onto my original as another layer, and then use opacity to blend it in. Next one, heightened drama. Look at all those darks and highlights and all those super sharp textures. Select it all, copy it, because it's already flattened. Don't save it, paste it on. Now this one, I'm going to go really low opacity. But it just shows me the boldness of the lighting. Oh, four is a little too low. How that can help. And then this one's nice and soft. And this gives me a lot of really, really careful uh, color adjustment layers. If I wanted to play with them, but I'm not going to right now, I'm just going to say layer, flatten image, select all, copy, don't save, paste on top, then blend in. And then lastly, this is the one I always do at the end, the max, max texture. Select all, copy, paste on top, and then I'll set the max texture one to pin light. And you see it, it just really slightly sharpens all of my textures. I actually set it because mine's a little too blurry for that. So let me see. Well, let's just try it. All right, so now each one is changing it just very slightly and getting it closer to something I like, All right? So now I'm going to save this as my Assignment 3 Creature Safe composition to the desktop, but not as my Photoshop. Instead, I'm going to save this as a TIFF, a T-I-F-F -F file. This is our archive file format. This is how we make our print-ready files. This is just my original composition and then all of these different color slight picks, which will help me get the best printout possible. All right, and then